clever. My dad always had this dream that we'd all live together on a family plot, so this came up and uh, it's perfect. You know, it's commutable to Missoula, but it offers nature. Even more so than just being bare land, it was off-grid. And starting with a blank slate is great. When we first moved here, like, you know, we're here briefly and kind of temporarily, so I wanted to build something. Yeah. Sure. Opening up, it gives you more space to work with yeah. and do some yoga out here or anything you want to do. When the weather's nice, it's awesome. I imagine it's a very, you know, if you were feuding with your significant other in 80 square foot, <laughs> when it was raining or hailing outside. But if you're feuding, you probably shouldn't be in 80 square feet. And you'll probably work it out then. You'll be forced to work it out. <laughs> well, this came about when we came across some material. We had a neighbor that had a structure collapse. And I just hate seeing stuff laying around, but we had three weeks to go and she's like, oh, I saw this really cute A-frame design. So I'm like, I remember seeing this really cool kind of thing. Now let me show you inside. It was like A, but it was uh, more special because it was transforming it. And it was like, my condition was, I don't want to think. And she's like, well, there are plans to do it. I was like, perfect. Let's crank it out. 30 bucks by Derek Dietrichson. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, let's totally do it. I, I think, you know, Deke stuff is very approachable and it brings it to the masses for people who's like, oh, I don't have any experience. Just like us uh, several years ago, I don't have any experience. Well, where do I approach? It's very approachable stuff. We started building and then three weeks later, yeah. she was born. Derek quotes uh, 1200 bucks for the thing, but we did it for 700 because of the materials and such. And 100 of that's solar panel. The sheet metal came from our neighbor's structure that collapsed and then any of these aged pieces of wood came from somewhere on the property, uh, milled lumber that sat out in the rain. These stumps came from my neighbor. I'm not sure what they were used for. This thing here is from basically a deck, a detached deck that got weathered. It's my favorite thing that I've ever built. I just think it's got character, tons of character. Standard issue, yes. antler. <laughs> Does it get hot with this polycarbonate? If you were if you were to keep it down, yeah, sure. It basically have a greenhouse effect. Like, yeah, It'd be the equivalent of leaving yourself in a car. <laughs> <laughs> right, so at first we didn't have enough time, and we just had to lift it up with a two by four. So for the wing wall, my dad came up with this. For the pulley here, we just got some rope, pulley over top, a uh, big header up there. This hook here, so it can't, you know get loose but basically we had to have the door fit inside the posts so it wouldn't hit the posts and then we got the same thing a pulley down there the header up top just probably what we had laying around and it's high enough where it wouldn't be a head knocker either um, so we figure you know six six maybe and then we got boat cleats over here that wraps around so a fine piece of engineering <laughs> <laughs> It was just a uh, you know glampy kind of style and very simple kitchen but usable. You can make your coffee. This is like this wood with uh, epoxy and resin on top. It's held up well. It's just I mean it's so basic, but at the same time it's so beautiful. Why reinvent the wheel? The, the most amazing thing is that you kind of can have this indoor outdoor experience, yeah, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Like and then you get to the stars from here at night. Yeah. So I think that's my favorite part. Funny because that's just plastic. Yeah, it's a uh, so, po polycarbonate. But it's it's held up well enough. Like something that we have to consider is that we're at 4,000 feet above elevation, mm -hmm. so we get heavy snow. So this thing had snow up to the sheet metal, oh, yeah. and it was fine because it's so steeply pitched. We take off the the deck and everything, so yeah. it doesn't get damaged in the winter. Well, extra damaged. Yeah. But th this you know uh, encourages accumulation of snow. So we're always thinking about snow, 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 and possible fire in the summer. Okay. Yeah, those are our concerns. The yeah. mice are secondary. <laughs> Another cool thing is that yeah. you can push the yep. beds together. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. On and you can sleep. You 
make the bed? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, really? from that's from cabinet board. It's part of Deke's design. We have casters under it. I reinforced it with some two by four on the inside. It's real sturdy. So the great thing is that it also acts as storage. It's a closed container, so the mice, we try to give closed storage containers because of, you guessed it, the mice. So the kitchen, <laughs> well. very simple. Okay. Bring it up here, and we can cook. We have the water. So you use just a lot of simple camping gear. Yeah. I, mean, that's... Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what would be brilliant? Like, after living in Asia, we have small kitchens and we do with a lot less. How about like a cookbook for a single burner? She's like, oh, they've already got those. <laughs> for people that live on boats. I was like, oh, okay, it's awesome. Being so used to living in Southeast Asia yeah. and understanding that we don't need a giant car, so we drive small cars. We don't need a lot of space. We have less space, less okay. things, just the stuff that we need. I would say Asia is the kind of the catalyst for what we're doing now because uh, it took that. I mean, you know, when I came into my first apartment, I looked for the other door. I was like, well, where's my other bedroom? No, there is no other bedroom. This is where you're living. Uh, at first it was a little shocking, but then you get used to it and it's like, you know, everything else is just opulent. How, how much do I really need? Have... This yeah. is store-bought. Okay. Yes, tongue and groove, they lock together. It goes up well and uh, it's held up well in the weather. Again, coming back to the sun. Yeah, we always worry about that. Uh, it gets pretty hot it's here and dry. We put our solar components up there. We got a little solar battery, a little motorcycle battery. Again, had it laying around, put it to use. And a solar charge controller. Yeah, the fan is pretty low watt. I think about the fins across about 12 inches, 14 inches, so it fits up perfectly up there. And also these the, these triangle kind of windows, we'll say, uh, just increases ventilation. You know, you open up this door and then the, the hot air evacuates. Just to me, it looks like a prototype of what houses can do, actually. It, it allows you to, you know, leave the conventional perception of housing and shelter and then think about what, what, what why houses are supposed to do. Are supposed to, exactly. Why, why, why not just moving stuff if it makes sense or... Like if you, if you really boil it down, what's a house do? It keeps you dry, it keeps you warm, it keeps you from overheating. It, it, it is what it is. It serves a purpose for relaxing outside during the summer. That's it. That's great. Oh, this is just getting started. Mom, this is on the tour of homes. We work at university, so we get vacation. So mm -hmm. that's why we come back here. With just two or two and a half months at a time, we're able to work here. And all of this is basically, what, eight years yeah. of two months at a time. Where we're coming up, it just seemed really obvious to build something. And, and I wasn't even here. And by the time I was able to take off work and come, and I was like, oh, great, we have this tiny little Let's be honest, cabin. it's not the Sistine Chapel. Okay? No. <laughs> we, we lived out of it a couple of summers. Yeah. This, how big is this? Eight, eight by 12. Eight by 12. And why eight by 12? At the time, it was the 100 square foot kind of zoning things. Yeah. That was the legal limit. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the stairs. Just a chainsaw, some patience. We put these together for free. Just falling dead and just being able to mill this into something usable is great. Otherwise, it goes to firewood, which is fine. But when we get like choice cut, something straight, we make it in board and batten. When we first got married, he was like, yeah, let's go fall down some trees. And I was like, me? And then I was like, oh, okay. These are going to be cut into boards and we're going to build like actual buildings out of it. Wow, me? Cool, yeah, let's do this. We cut a bunch of trees. There were some down trees and my dad's got a sawmill. We made boards. You know, the sun's brutal, so we replace them when they need replacing, and then those become firewood, so Small it's details. a circle of life. This is a deer antler. My dad keeps on the, the lookout for good ones. Hey, this one's gonna be, I got a good door handle for you today, he says. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is a, a goalie stick. And Gary plays hockey, so we had a stick that was broken, but we knew we could reuse it. Everything's very utilitarian. Because it is, it does have electricity. It's got 12 volt it's DC. It's insulated, it's so panel. it's cool. Just weird stuff like this. My dad had this idea, um, not for this ladder, but he had an idea for a panel house. And so we cut up all these and he had a metal jig and we made these walls, but then it was never gonna pass uh, for permitting. So we tore it apart and we made different things out of it. And this is a staircase I made out of this lumber, the decking. And it's very easy to get up yeah. there thinking okay small structures how can we reuse multi-purpose yeah. so this ladder was perfect 
just the right size up there too, yeah, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. We have a little, little ceiling fan. Ceiling fan. Spare no expense for luxury. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the time I fall off, right? <laughs> <laughs> It went through different stages of design, if you will. At first it was like a beer design shack, like yeah. a lot of beer posters and coasters and paraphernalia. And then last year I thought, let's just make it brighter and something yeah. more cozy. Again, we're not one to over-engineer anything. We just thought in case ever in the future if this was like a season, um, winter time thing, then we could just do this then we could have more space. Yeah. It's not rocket science. Just <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun. Rocket surgery. <laughs> just simple, yeah. And just the some kitchen. storage down here. Again, very rustic. That's the refrigerator? Uh, that's like a little cooler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's here's standard igloo. Two, two gallons at a time. Uh, it really puts water conservation in perspective when you're hauling your own. You know, sure. you really? take it a little bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. We put everything in, a in plastic containers because of sometimes we have mice or other critters. Um, we don't really have any hardwoods to speak of in Montana, so this is all softwood. Knowing that going into it, we knew it was going to scar a little bit, but that's completely okay, you know? I um, kind of like just, the rustic look. Yeah, we love the rustic look. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I just love the wear pattern. I love as the door swings out, that mm -hmm. caster has got its own wear, that drop pin's got its own wear. Like some people think it's kind of an imperfection, but it adds character and I like it. So how about the heat juice? We do a lot of improvisation up here because town is 25 miles away. Nice. And I just hate going to town, to be honest. I'd rather be up here. Being here after my parents and my sister got set up, we came across like a lot of uh, spare material. So it was just a rolled roof. We had a micro burst that tore some of it off. And then we came into some sheet metal, some scrap sheet metal. So we, we dressed her up a little bit. How much does this whole thing cost you? 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because so much of it we came across, recycled stuff, free stuff. Well, the, the trees we fell. Yeah, fell. yeah. Um, like all this deck is just screws and nails. The rocks, obviously, free in the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> But just nothing. You yeah. got what? Screws and nails? Screws, and nails, and OSB. OSB would have the main Where's cost. Where's the OSB? OSB's on the inside, so you can see here, oh, okay. because I'm not a finished carpenter and I really don't care. So that's what's the next layer after the board and bat. Um, I could put some sort of trim on that, but honestly, it's mostly just keeping the mice out. But it's a losing battle, so. <laughs> so this window, we wanted it to sometimes open, yeah. sometimes close, depending on the, on the weather. Because of the, the no electricity thing and because we're being out here so much, we kind of rely on the manual as opposed to the machine things when we can because they, t they don't go out and they don't go off lines. It's uh, rustic chic. <laughs> so you can a little bit open it <laughs> or open it a lot. Yeah, there's different settings pre-programmed. <laughs> no need a battery. Yeah, exactly. Don't need a battery. It's not going to fail. Did you have any plans? Did you even make a drawing? Just, yeah, basically just started building. 8 by 12, you know, it's not all that complex, believe it or not. Did you have experience before you started building? None. No. None. <laughs> <laughs> no experience painting or any of the yeah. DIY things. And then when we acquired this land, we figured, well, do we have enough money to pay someone else? No, nope. we don't. <laughs> so let's make it ourselves. <laughs> So we built a, a knee wall here to, to make the A's up a little higher so there's more usable space. So it does feel a little bit bigger. That same 80 square feet does, believe it or not, feel bigger. What's a knee wall? A knee wall, like a knee wall. Oh. We came up three feet and then we started the A-frame. So there's a little bit more head clearance there. Same brown sheet metal, uh, same tongue and groove on the outside that helped, that weathered well for us. Uh, same kind of flashing here. This is actually a conveyor belt, just like their remnants and stuff. Again, sun, water, wind. Same Always color scheme about. because we just wanted to blend in. Yeah, and <laughs> different colors of paint. <laughs> kind of camo. Just love everything the forest has to offer. The countertop, just the grain, just the live bark on the edge. I probably cut it two or three years ago. I, like if a tree needs to go, I cut it in preparation for using it someday. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. So I, I knew exactly. I was like, need a countertop? Boom. I've got like three or four of these ready to go. So any projects, I just think it's... You can spend a ton of money on a countertop that doesn't look that great, or I can spend five bucks and just a little bit of planning and have something that looks really awesome. 
I cut it on the mill, uh, I keep it out of the rain, I keep weight on it, and then I cut any of the cusp or the bow out of it. And then after a couple years, like I'm far from a woodworker, but you know, if you get start with a big enough piece, you can end with a smaller piece that's relatively free of imperfection. What about the beds? Same design from Dietrichson coffins, as we call them. If we can't make any career, we'll be coffin makers. <laughs> That's great. It yeah. is a coffin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no joke. I like this now. Yeah. Right. Just finished using. Put the door on yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Got a piece of wood I can prop up the thing. Again, we're working on some of the, the rigging for this. We didn't want to have something outside. We wanted to do it all internally and kind of get a little classier with it with um, like some hydraulic pistons. They're heavy enough. I'm not really worried about any wind. So. Cross ventilation, huh? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so we decided we didn't need a fan. We encourage ventilation. Yeah. So Compared to Korea, this is such clean air and amazing quality. In Korea, we, yep. we have an app that we have to uh, check, check on daily. a daily basis, so we know to wear a mask or not. Sometimes yeah. it's really bad. Do you appreciate the air quality when you come here? Top notch. When I land, it's the first thing I notice. I wish I could jar it up and bring it back, to be honest. That's the thing I miss the most. So how much did this one cost you? Uh, I'd prefer not to think about it, but it's about 2000 bucks. Mostly just because it's new material. Which is fine. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't building stuff. Some people ask us about being off grid and stuff. It's like, isn't it frustrating? I find it's like actually kind of liberating. You know, when you go to uh, a restaurant and you have too many choices, well, if it's hot outside, then I'm going to do something inside the barn. Before we got electricity, if it was a good solar day, I'm cutting boards with everything I can use for electricity, I'm charging up my battery. So it kind of guides my day. It takes out a lot of thinking. And it's really refreshing, to be honest, to play to nature. You know, I, I just let nature guide me for my day. We, we love this little Coleman cook stove. Um, it's easy. It's like one switch down and then it's got a self igniter in there. And then um, I will set it up with more pans. Yeah, and pots and stuff. yeah, yeah. We're this is definitely no. you caught us in day like 16 of construction. <laughs> so it took you 16 days yeah. to get this. Yeah, we, so yeah. you must work long days um, until I run out of material. This is what we do. This is what we look forward to. So, of course, this is what I want to do. I guess what it is like anyone go to the store and buy something and there's no challenge in that. Throughout the year, I don't get to work with my hands, so I feel really pent up. But when I get to then it's all day. Summertime, this is our idea of fun. Like the last day I'm here, I was like, oh God, I wish I would have got more done. No matter what I get done, I always want to get more done. At its most basic, if you need shelter and structure, then it's like a basic human skill. We've lost a lot of these skills just in the last 100 years or even 50. We've, we've specialized in so many things and hired out for so many things that of course I'd want to do it for myself. That may, maybe the take home point is just like smaller is okay and everything has its purpose and before you sweep something off the table it's like I couldn't do that well maybe just try it first you know I, I couldn't live in 300 square feet well maybe try it I couldn't build anything well maybe try hanging a picture and then doing that and then doing that and maybe you can and if you fail that's okay try again or maybe ask and most most importantly just try especially if you didn't go into debt over something. Maybe $40,000 a year isn't a good investment for school. The trades, the trades, do it.